My name is Dr. Raoul McLaughlin. This is the history of Bangor in Northern Ireland. Chapter 2. Hereford, the Mapamundi, and the Medieval World. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Psalm 24. There is an extraordinary object that demonstrates the medieval Western mind and illustrates their view of the world. It is the Hereford Mapamundi, a wall display preserved in the English Cathedral of Hereford. And here, on the edge of the map, is Bangor. The Hereford map is a masterpiece of medieval cartography that once hung on the northern aisle of the cathedral choir. It was a Mapamundi, a map of the world, drawn and painted on a single sheet of vellum, a carefully prepared parchment from calfskin. Measuring about five feet in height and four feet across, this world image is the largest medieval map that has survived into modern times. The map dates to 1300, 700 years ago, but the layout, information and viewpoints it preserves are far older. So what was the exact origin and history of this priceless object? The Hereford Mapamundi depicts one part of the Earth's globe, viewed as a round panel. The three known continents are all depicted, comprising Asia, Europe and Africa. But without knowing the compass points, the cartographers have positioned the map using an east-west orientation. Above all creation is Christ in majesty, enthroned within the clouds to oversee the affairs of the earth and issue the last judgment on mankind. The marks of crucifixion are still visible on his open palms. Adoring angels hover overhead and the Latin inscription reads, Behold my testimony the gates of heaven stand open for the saved and closed for those who face eternal damnation. Asia and the rising sun are at the top of the map. The holy city of Jerusalem is positioned in the center of the circle and the waters of the Red Sea are depicted in a crimson pigment. In the bottom center of the map the Mediterranean Sea divides Europe from Africa. Spain and Germany are shown there, while the Scandinavian lands are depicted on the outer fringe of Europe. And here, at the Atlantic edge of the world, near the setting sun, are the islands of Britain and Ireland, Britannia and Hibernia. These islands are distorted by the strange curvature of the map, which tries to present a spherical earth on a flat plane. But significant sites are carefully recorded on these outlying islands. Here in Ireland, four major sites are documented. These are labelled in Latin as Civitas, large, well-governed, settled communities with hierarchical institutions. These places possessed substantial populations and significant political influence. Two of the Irish Kivitas are religious centres associated with the first and foremost Irish saints. Here is Kildare, sanctified by Saint Bridget. Kildare, Kivitas, Saint Bridget. In the north is Armagh, which superseded nearby Downpatrick to become the foremost religious site associated with St. Patrick, the first bishop sent to Ireland and the patron saints of the Irish people. The text reads, Armagh, Givitas, St. Patrick. Two other sites in Ireland merited world recognition. In the south was Givitas, Devlin, this was a Norse settlement founded on the River Liffey 
in the mid 9th century. This was a Viking stronghold on the Irish coast that would later develop into Dublin, the southern capital of modern Ireland. But here, in the north, there is another contender for the political and cultural nexus of the island. Here was the Irish Christian community at medieval Bangor, Kivitas, Bangor. But how had this image of Ireland in the wider world come into being? The Hereford Mapamundi was composed and copied from other popular world maps, which were displayed and widely circulated across medieval Europe. The map copyist drew from a long tradition and used Latin as his main text, as this was the common language in, of the learned across Western Europe. But he also added his own small details to the map to represent local interests and identities. Hereford was drawn on the map of Mundi to show worshippers where exactly their cathedral stood in the world's scheme of things. The map maker also records his own name, but Richard of Haldingham had only made a small comment in Anglo-Norman, which reads, Let all who have this record, who hear or read or see it, pray to the divine nature of Jesus, that he may have mercy on Richard of Haldingham, who has composed this. This was a minor addition to a world view that had endured for many centuries. In fact, the outline of the world may have been almost a millennia old when the cartographer carefully traced the image onto the fine vellum surface of the parchment. Confirmation can be found in the small illustration located on the left-hand corner of the map. This image depicts Caesar Augustus, the adopted son of Julius Caesar, and the first true emperor of Rome. Yet here he is shown as a medieval monarch wearing a tall papal crown. The emperor sits on a narrow high-backed throne and issues orders to three Greek geographers. The orders are depicted on a Latin scroll which reads, Go forth into the whole world and make a report to the Senate on all its parts. To confirm this order, I have attached my seal to this ordinance. Beneath the order, the seal reads, Seal of the Emperor Caesar Augustus. These instructions echoed a famous passage in the New Testament. The second chapter of Luke describes the nativity of Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Here in the Hereford map, Augustus is issuing a further command that all the world should be known to man. Medieval tradition suggests that Augustus selected three agents for a special assignment to explore the geographical limits of the ancient world. The information is displayed around the border of the Hereford map. The Latin text, written in red ink, confirms the region assigned to each geographer. Nicodocus was sent east from Roman Syria into Persia and India. Theodotus headed south into Africa to confirm that the limits of further travel and habitation were blocked by the formidable Saharan desert. Meanwhile, the geographer Polycletus undertook the journey north and west, finding the limits of Europe and confirming the size and position of the Atlantic Isles, Britannia and Hivernia, Britain and Ireland. According to medieval traditions, this is how Christendom inherited an image of the inhabited world. 
the Mappa Mundi. Medieval scribes located and drew the prime sites of their later civilizations onto this ancient blueprint. They added new settlements, cities and kivitas as they came into being, including medieval Bangor, and they depicted Christ in majesty presiding over this Christian orientated earth. But what do the ancient sources reveal about the actual map presented by the Emperor Augustus to the Senate? What was the world scheme of the Roman emperors? And why did the north of Ireland appear on this ancient original? Chapter 3 The World Map of Marcus Agrippa An image of the world for the city of Rome to observe. Pliny the Elder, Natural History, Book 3, Passage 2. 